Give it up for Tesla. Oh my gosh, the Cybertruck delivery event just concluded. And we have some excellent news to go over with you here in this video. We're going to share parts of the Cybertruck delivery event as well. Here the actual footage because I, th I, th I think you just need to, to see this for yourself. And if you're a viewer of this channel, you are going to have easy access to that. I'm going to provide that to you here in this video. We're going to go over all of the highlights, what this big news is that is crazy news for Tesla stock investors. Now, we're going to take a look at Tesla stock reaction as well and what I think is coming over the next couple of days. This, well, we were almost spot on yet again. Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because why not? Why not push this video out to as many people as possible? If, if, if there is a video uh, that, that should be seen by everyone, it's definitely going to be this one. Nonetheless, let's get started. Let me just say first, what a surreal moment as a Tesla stock investor. It's been a very long time in the making. We have the first Cybertruck deliveries and this is such a ridiculously impressive product off the charts. I am duly impressed. Um, it's literally more powerful than any other truck out there on the markets in the, the pulling test. And you'll see that here in this footage. It's bulletproof. <laughs> That's honestly ridiculous. It beat a Porsche 911 in a race, towing a Porsche 911. I mean, just insane. But this is the big news. This is the positive news for Tesla stock. One minute ago, Tesla has revealed final Cybertruck pricing, trims, and range. Starting prices, excluding the federal EV credit, rear wheel drive at $60,990, all wheel drive $79,990, and the Cyber Beast at $99,000 thousand nine hundred ninety dollars with 320 mile range the all-wheel drive actually has the most range at 340 miles and then the rear wheel drive at 250 miles now this is basically spot on of my of of my estimate that we talked about in the video earlier today that we've talked about for days now i thought the lowest end variant would be around sixty thousand as high as sixty five thousand dollars the second tier variant if you will around 75 to 80 thousand dollars looks like it's at eighty thousand dollars and the highest end model around 90 to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars i actually thought that that we would get some kind of like tri-motor variant at ninety thousand and then like a plaid version of the cybertruck at one hundred twenty thousand dollars i'm sure we'll get that but for now the cyber beast which is like the highest end uh variant for the cybertruck it's just at about $100,000. So why is this good news? Well, this is good news because essentially all of these Cybertrucks, again, are already sold. So it's just more money that Tesla will bring in, like Dan Ives and Wedbush. Dan, Ive, Dan Ives is like one of the best analysts in the entire world. And he thought the lowest end pricing for the Cybertruck would be around $50,000. So now for every... Cybertruck Tesla sells, they're going to bring in ten or $15,000 more than what even your bullish analysts thought. The bears are definitely wrong. Even the bullish analysts were wrong. This should help the bottom line, the top line, a lot more. We already, as, as per Elon, don't expect this to be accretive to margins or be good for margins for a while. So the higher the pricing, the better. Selling a Cybertruck for $61,000 is better than selling one for $50,000 or $51,000. I think that's pretty simple, straightforward, and I think that is a positive catalyst for Tesla stock. Now, we're going to look at some of the clips from the Cybertruck delivery event itself, and then we're going to get into, at the end of this video, what I expect from here out of Tesla stock, because this is a four-year catalyst in the making. It's going to take a while for the market to fully digest this for these earnings estimates to what I assume will move higher on this. Analysts are not exactly quick at um, aggregating you know, data and what that means for a stock price. But I expect 
very good things from analysts, long story short. I should also say as well, the rear wheel drive is a 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Still uh, pretty impressive for a truck. That will be in 2025. So indeed, we will be getting these highest end variants first. The all-wheel drive, uh, 340 miles. Again, 4.1 seconds to 60. Um, 112 mile per hour top speed, 600 horsepower, 7,400 pound uh, torque, and 11,000 uh, towing capacity. And it looks like all we see on the Cyber Beast so far is delivery in 2024, 320 mile range estimate. And then we have towing at 11,000 pounds for the performance, range at 440 plus miles. Um, impressive acceleration 2.6 seconds zero to 60 all-wheel drive and top speed of 130 miles per hour it also looks like the charging speed is up to 128 miles added in 15 minutes Yeah, so. In, in movies, you sometimes see the hero or heroine uh, hiding behind the car door uh, while being shot with bullets. That doesn't actually work un unless you're driving a Cybertruck. So, uh, if Al Capone showed up with a Tommy gun and emptied the entire magazine, into the car door, you would still be alive. So, uh, you know, and so people say like, well, you know, why'd you make it bulletproof? I'm like, why not? <laughs> Do you want to, how tough is your truck? Because the, the, the other trucks, the bullets go through both sides. So uh, you shoot a bullet, goes through both sides of the car. Um, and, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, sometimes you get these like, late civilization vibes. <laughs> You know, you never know when the, the apocalypse uh, could come, come along at any moment. And um, at here at Tesla, we have the finest in apocalypse uh, technology. <laughs> uh, I was on the Joe Rogan show, and uh, Joe bet me a dollar that his armor-piercing steelhead arrow would go through the car. It uh, hit... No, he owes me a dollar. <laughs> so. Now, what about utility? So, strength is great, but is this is this a you know perhaps just a show truck, uh, just a you know a showpiece, or can it do actual work? How does it work as a real everyday truck? Well, here we have the future towing the future. So, uh, if, if basically if, if you can fit. Uh, any cargo in, in the in the trunk or in the bed, it, you you can basically move it around. So it's got uh, over a ton of uh, payload capability, but you could really put more than that in it. Uh, you can tow over 11,000 pounds, um, and it's got a super tough composite bed. No liner needed. The bed is six foot long, four foot wide, and you can fit um, four by eight feet, uh, four, four by eight pieces of plywood in with the with the uh, with the back down. So, um, for those who are early into the truck world, there's, there's something uh, in the truck world called a, a truck pull. This is really the, the, the key test of how much power does your truck actually have. So you have to pull this uh, 40,000 pound sled. And uh, when we went to the track, we said, well, well what's the best, uh, yeah, that, that you've seen. I said, well, it's, it'd be the Ford uh, F-350 diesel. It was like, well, let's, let's put our truck up against that. So the, the guy who runs the, the truck pool said, there's no way. There's no way. It's like, well, let's try it. Let's see what happens.
we actually had to slightly turn the car at the end so it didn't hit the wall. <laughs> so this, uh, you have here a car that is, uh, you know, um, bullet, bullet tough, uh, you know, like that phrase, TM. Um, <laughs> and uh, can outpull an F-350 diesel. Uh, has a massive towing capacity, massive bed. Uh, one of, it, it's basically an incredibly useful truck. It, it's not just some grandstanding showpiece like me. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's, actually, it's actually very useful. <laughs> now what about performance? So this, I should say, it's, it has an adaptive air suspension. So no matter what the load is, uh, you, it will, you can always have the, it can set the, the ride height at any, at, at low height, anything. It will automatically adjust the damping according to uh, how much load it's carrying and the road conditions. Uh, it has a 17 inch ground clearance. Now, that's a true 17 inches. The, it, with, typically with a truck, you'll, you'll get the differential hanging down low, uh, the rear differential, and that's t what you'll high side on a rock. Uh, but this is this has a completely flat bed, so you could you could uh, drive over basically anything. We actually uh, did, took the Cybertruck on a, a Baja rally drive, so this is insane off-road capability. It has locking differentials, rear torque vectoring, uh, and the crazy thing is they'll do this all in comfort. Um, it has steer by wire, which is if, if, it's one of the things where most people don't know what that means, but um, it's, what, it's how modern jets are designed, the steer-by-wire, which, which gives you variable gain. So if you turn the wheel, a small, the, steering, the steering yoke, a small amount in the parking lot, it will turn the wheels a lot. But if you, if you turn it on, on a highway, it turns the wheels a small amount. So it, it dynamically adjusts how, how much the wheels turn according to uh, what your speed is. Um, and this actually makes it very easy to drive. It actually, and it has a turning circle less than a Model S. So this thing can pack, practically turn it, you know, rotate on a, you know, dime basically. Um, it has incredible low speed maneuverability. And then uh, there's a lot of advanced details under the skin. Uh, it's the first time that a car is moving to a 48 volt a uh, low voltage architecture from 12 volts, which has been around for 100 years. Um, we have Ethernet comms, uh, distributed controllers, allows for 70% less wire in the car. Um, and it's, uh, it's really, the, the internals are as advanced as the externals. It's, it's uh, a whole new step change in the technology. So let's take it to the racetrack and see how, how does the Cybertruck perform against a Porsche 911. <laughs> and I, sh I should say, this is, this is an actual Porsche. It's, we literally just got it from the dealer. 2023 Porsche 911. But wait, there's more. So the... the <laughs> It can, it can tow a Porsche 911 across a quarter mile faster than the Porsche 911 can go by itself. I should say tougher than bullets. Uh, tow pretty much anything. Uh, faster than a 911 while towing a 911. <laughs> so, uh, and deliveries bring, begin now. Thank you.
What's up? The Cybertruck air suspension is massive. The engineers said the ride quality is really good and improved. 420 liters of water, and I'm no engineer. I don't specifically know too much about vehicles, but that looks like some pretty hardy suspension, if I were to say so myself from an amateur's perspective. This looks like the first time we're seeing an image of the underbed storage. Sawyer Merritt says it's a good size, and it does look pretty deep here. So this is underbed storage. So this is under the bed of the truck itself. I mean, name it, one gas pickup truck that has an underbed storage. This could actually help make up for some of the lack of frunk that we have in the front of the truck. This is actually pretty cool. In my personal opinion, I think this is potentially going to be a big seller as well. Just give you added room in a pickup. If, if, if you're going to, say, like the grocery store in your pickup truck, 
you don't want to put all your groceries in the bed of the truck where you got the tools, where you got the gas or anything else, right? You want to be able to put it uh, elsewhere and you necessarily might not want to drive with it in your cabin. Well, this in the frunk, that's going to help out a lot with that specific problem. On the assembly line, you have this kind of poster that says bed installation, no liner required. It says one of the largest sub assemblies on the line makes its way into the back of the truck using advanced suction cup technology paired with a semi automated lift ass lift assist the truck bed is maneuvered and installed with extreme precision the bed is made from sheet molded composite SMC for added durability and eliminates the need to install an aftermarket bed liner. Sawyer Merritt does share these images with us of the Cybertruck tires and he says these are a lot beefier than what the pictures actually say and that's probably the case. It looks like if, if Sawyer Merritt has a, a normal man foot, yeah you can see the comparison here. Those are some pretty dang beefy tires. That's something that Joe Rogan even said himself, that when you look at the Cybertruck in images, it really just doesn't do it justice compared when you're right next to the thing. Here we can see a Cybertruck on the assembly line, and here is the interior probably about halfway done, three quarters of the way done, I would say. Uh, you, you definitely see some components just laying around, steering wheels not even on. So they are cranking out Cybertrucks as we are currently speaking. Here is another photo of a Cybertruck on the assembly line. And here is a Cybertruck without the whole body, just the glass and what looks like the tires and all the other components, just not the body. Uh, they probably did this specifically for this Cybertruck delivery event. I doubt this is how they're uh, getting assembled on the assembly line. So pretty cool to see all of this. I recommend you guys pause the video as well and take a closer look. It looks like you can see some of the motors here might be a uh, dual motor if I can see uh, really, really hard to tell though. And you can't leave out the cyber cart around Giga Texas as well. Tesla's first powered frunk is called Powergate. It has one of the longest LED lighting elements on any passenger vehicle and reveals a hidden bench for two. So yes, the frunk acts as a frunk, but also a bench for other events or just to hang out by your truck, in which when I get mine, I'll be doing a lot of just that. Here is the front of the Cybertruck sub-assembly, and here is part of the Cybertruck assembly line itself. They asked the individuals that are at uh, the Gigafactory right now, they asked if they could take photos, and indeed, Tesla said yes. So that's, that's pretty cool. It does look... It, you can tell why it took four years to start actual production of the Cybertruck because that is that looks pretty complicated. And we have the Cyber Squad. I believe these are Cybertrucks that are finishing up or maybe some of them that are going to actually make their hands uh, or make their way into hands of customers today. We're expecting 10 Cybertruck deliveries. But then again, there are some people that are saying there is hundreds of Cybertrucks that are partially built or completely built inside of Giga Texas. So we'll see what ultimately happens. Elon has a history of surprising us with some of these events. So Nothing is off the table here today. Tesla stock following this event was down about 1.66%, down another 0.39% here in after hours. Again, I think it's going to take a while for analysts to figure out what this means for Tesla as a business. Now, I don't think there was a lot of hopium, excitement, good things baked into Tesla stock heading into this event. I think most of this rally you have seen from 194 to where we are today at $239 was really based on 10-year treasury yields falling and the five rate cuts we're pricing in for 2024. With that being said, I do think this is positive. I do think this is good news. Now, the knee-jerk reaction is usually buy the rumor, sell the news. 
Now, that narrative is not going to hold, in my personal opinion. We've been right a lot here on this channel. We've been wrong a lot here on this channel. So don't, I mean, don't trade based on that narrative itself. But I, I do think we, uh, we are going to get a rally for Tesla stock. I do think the stock is going to go higher. Now, it's going to be volatile. Tomorrow is going to be exceptionally volatile as well. You have Fed Jerome Powell speaking at 11 a.m. tomorrow. You have ISM manufacturing data coming out at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It's going to be volatile. There's going to be other things going on as well. And I, re I really am not even paying attention to any other move we're seeing throughout the rest of the day today and what we've seen in after hours today. I think it's going to take some time. You want to see the markets open for regular trading. You want to get analyst commentary and opinions on this that I don't know how you could be, be bearish or negative on what we heard today. Everything was better than expected besides maybe the mileage. Some people were expecting, uh, you know, higher mileage, like 500 miles for some variant. Doesn't look like we got that much range. But I think that is made up for in many of the other aspects that we, you've, you've seen here in this video so far. So where do I think Tesla stock is going? I think Tesla is going to 300 by the end of this year, if not into the 300. And a lot of that has to do with the Cybertruck being positive for Tesla. A lot of it has to do with so much capital on the sidelines, trillions of dollars on the sidelines that is about to be deployed into stocks like Tesla, into interest rate sensitive companies. And I think Tesla uh, is really the one you want to be in right now. Estimates have fallen so much for 2024. It's not going to be hard for Tesla to beat the estimates. And I think when we get, you know, more clarity on what this will look like for margins or, you know, other different details, going to turn into a very positive event for Tesla. Now, if this were to be some negative event for Tesla that caused Tesla stock to sell off big time, that would have happened already, in my personal opinion. You would be seeing a massive sell-off here in after hours. You are not. You did not see a sell-off today. Tesla stock basically just traded sideways throughout the rest of the day today. I think that is, you know, a, a, a sign, right? that this is actually going to be a very positive catalyst when all things are said. If this was going to be a negative catalyst, I believe if, if the Cybertruck was priced at 50000 on the low end, you'd probably see Tesla stock down 3 to 4% right now. It's not. It's down a third of 1% after hours. So I'm very excited about what is to come next. And I uh, again, I do think Tesla's going to break out into the 300s by the end of this year. If Fed Jerome Powell confirms that interest rates are going lower in 2024 then that could happen a lot sooner. Tesla stock could, you know, rally aggressively uh, coming tomorrow and coming next week and the week after that. I think Powell is potentially a huge catalyst coming tomorrow that could really kickstart the next wave of excitement for stocks in our markets that could take some of that $6 trillion out of money market funds and take that back into equities. So, Powell's going to be a big catalyst tomorrow in conjunction with this Cybertruck uh, delivery event and the new information that we heard today. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you think a rally is coming for Tesla or not? If you are in the rally camp, you want to see Tesla break above that 100-day moving average at $245.60 per share. The RSI is at 55.14, so you're pretty much neutral. There's uh, a lot of an upside move that could come for Tesla before the stock would be on the technical overbought side. And the MACD looks pretty good as well. The MACD line is 3.41 positive, And the signal line, this blue line, is 1.19 positive. So both of those are encouraging. Tesla stock is rallying back here in after hours. We want to see a, a close here in after hours above 240 as well. I'm not going to gripe too much if we're 239 and some change or for 240 doesn't matter too much, but 240 is a psychological level. It is a level in which we've seen a lot of um, volatility around. So I want to see a close above that, uh, but preferably a close above 245.60 coming tomorrow would be great news. Tesla option activity 
is uh, 37% positive today. You've seen 857 orders, totaling $1.61 billion. Volume is uh, about 56% uh, to the call side and 44% to the put side. So pretty good, relatively speaking, considering this is a major catalyst that we just seen today, a four-year catalyst in the making. I'll take these numbers any day. If you're looking at the dollar amount that's currently sold short, shorts are in trouble here, guys. You have $22.06 billion worth of short positions. If Tesla stock does rally from here and the outlook is for looser Fed policy, for rate cuts, and you just got a really good Cybertruck event uh, that's going to be good news for Tesla stock. Yeah, you want to be careful if you're a short. So I think at some point now over the next couple of months, you will see that that Tesla short squeeze. And that will um, help push Tesla uh, into the 300s past 300 i think by the end of this year though you're at least going to be up, uh, approaching right around 300 dollars. so i'm not a financial advisor i'm not a financial planner but that's my expectation and that's how i will be trading if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time link down below in the description of this video thank you for watching that's gonna do it for this one that's all of the news you need to know in regards to this event in regards to the news today, we did post a video before this event came out earlier in the day today. I uh, highly recommend you guys check that one out as well. In the meantime, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.